Yesterday, AMD's master debater Scott Herkelman sat down with Club386.com to give a refreshingly honest interview, almost entirely devoid of anything but straightforward and frank answers. And I do really recommend people check it out. There's some interesting stuff Scott just comes right out and says. Like, for example, he just openly confirmed something that I leaked a week ago, that despite the odd pricing gap between the $450 7700 XT and the just $50 more $500 7800 XT, there would be a similar number of each card available on launch day, and thus indeed, you really can't argue that AMD is pricing them close together to make the 7800 XT look good. They would make it be a very small amount of 7700 XTs on launch day if that was the case. It was just there to make it look good. Why would they be shipping so many of them? Well, yeah, that's what I'm going to answer today in this video. In addition to leaking what you should expect out of Navi32 pricing trends, benchmarks that I just have of this 7800 XT and 7700 XT, and I'm even going to divulge some new shady business practices that I'm hearing NVIDIA may do again this year. And actually, the first thing I'm going to cover, because I believe it lays a good groundwork for understanding all the other leaks today, is why the 7700 XT and 7800 XT are priced only $50 from each other. And there are a few factors. The first one being that undoubtedly AMD sees that the 7700 XT, which uses the same dies as the 7800 XT, all they are doing to make that is removing four gigabytes of RAM and maybe using a bit cheaper coolers and boards. It probably only costs about $50 less to make anyways. And when they look at how uncompetitively priced the 4060 Ti is, and he's probably saying to themselves, it costs only $50 less to make and our competition doesn't look that competitive. So why would we charge any less than that? And okay though, then you go, why are you shipping so many 7700 XTs? Surely you don't need to disable half of your yields of this configuration to get those. Uh, TSMC's 5 nanometer node, which is what was used for that small 200 millimeter squared GCD and Navi32, has famously fantastic yields. Why are there so many of them at launch? And, well, this is where I bring up one of the quotes I put out there in a leak last week, which is that AMD, they did not fix RDNA 3 and Navi 32. That's not why it's coming out so much longer after Navi 33 and Navi 31. No, it's coming out later because they've just been waiting. In fact, I've kind of heard there's a good chance they manufacture Navi 32. All of the Navi 32 they have right now, basically in December last year, and then they bend them so they could know what percentage of their yields are can be fully enabled before they decide how to segment. And they just threw those dies in a warehouse. And well, if I put this quote on screen, this person opened up to me more this week and said that, well, over time, they can shift most of the volume to the 7800 XT that we all have to remember that at launch, they can pick and choose which dies to sell first. And at launch, they have a fantastic bundle with a game that is getting great reviews. And so... Yeah, let's ship the bad yields first because a lot of people are going to be buying these cards for Starfield. Anyways, this is an excellent opportunity to get rid of those disabled dies. Long term, 80% of the yields are probably going to be 7800 XT. And so if that, and they do expect this, sells better, then they will just shift most of the capacity to 7800 XT. And in fact, in that interview I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Scott Herkelman basically confirms this, saying that their partners are allowed to innovate over time with how they build and price their cards themselves. And so I think that's him directly suggesting that while they want the 7700 XT to be a certain price at launch, long term, they can have cheaper coolers and gravitate towards $400. They're fine with that. But right now, they know that they have a great game bundle with Starfield. And right now is the time to try to get rid of those yields with the highest price they can get away with. And that higher price is also priced above the 6750 XT, which is another point here. The third point for why they're priced the way they are. AMD is still trying to thread this needle where they price all of their products just aggressively enough to make NVIDIA look bad but not so aggressively that people won't buy Navi 22. 
If the 7700 XT was $400, I am sure AMD is worried no one would bother with the rest of the Navi 22 stock or even some of that Navi 21 stock on the market right now. And so, yeah, again, over time, AIBs can make cheaper coolers and sell these for whatever they want if they can get away with making a profit margin. And from what I'm hearing, the bomb cost on the 7700 XT is cheap enough that they probably can sell that thing for like 420 or less over time. But they don't want to right now. They want to allow AIBs more time to sell through RDNA 2 oversupply. And despite there being so much consternation about this weird $50 price cap, to this day, the people I speak to at AMD are confident in the 7700 XT. We'll see if they are proven wrong, but the way they look at it is, well, the 7800 XT, this is an aggressively priced 4070 killer. And the 7700 XT is a slightly less aggressively priced 4070 and 4060 Ti killer. And now that I have benchmarks from several contacts who already have the cards that I've averaged together, I know that before I put this on screen, what this is is... I took the same games that were benchmarked by several people I know, averaged them together the relative difference for 4K and 1440p. I didn't look at 1080p testing because I'm going to be honest with you, in my opinion, it is insulting to suggest someone in 2023 is buying a card for more than $400 for 1080p gaming. That's absolutely ridiculous. People are buying these cards for 1440p and even for 4K sometimes. And so if I put this on screen, yep, here it is averaged relative performance to the 4070 and averaged between 4K and 1440p, which actually was pretty close to each other in relative difference between the cards, by the way. But uh, yeah, if you look at this, you can see that AMD, at least based on the data I've seen so far, was pretty dang honest about the performance of these graphics cards. The 7800 XT does beat the 6800 XT on average, and it does beat the 4070 by, I don't know, 3 to 6%, depending on which context data I'm using, but I averaged it together here. And in fact, the 7700 XT... That's only 9 to 16% behind the 4070, and it has the same amount of RAM, and it comes with Starfield, and it's $150 cheaper. It even beats the 6800 on average as well and destroys the 4060 Ti. And I'm really not kidding about what I'm saying here. There were some averages I saw from contacts where the 4070 was only 10% ahead of the 7700 XT. I think there will be some people that find it to be a bit stronger, relatively speaking, than that. But there are some averages where I saw it was only a 10% difference. And again, the 4070 costs 600 the 7700 XT costs 450 and it has the same amount of RAM, and it comes with Starfield. So AMD thinks that the only reason you would think the 7700 XT is poorly priced is if you compare it to a new card they are launching that they're fine if you buy. But otherwise, especially if you're somebody who's just looking for a new RDNA 3 mid-range card below 500 and you want Starfield, then, well, this is a cheaper way to get Starfield with an AMD graphics card. And actually, the premium edition of Starfield. Or at least that's what AMD thinks. And I want to be clear. That's what AMD thinks. Just because I'm explaining AMD's thinking doesn't mean I agree with all of it. If you ask me, I think they should have subtracted and added 10 to $30 to each one. Like, honest to God, if someone at AMD made this argument to me months ago, I would have said, well, you still can't just make it $50, guys. A at least add $10. Make, make the 7800 XT 509 and then subtract 10 from the other. Make the 7700 XT 439. Like that little bit of a difference there should even out enough that I don't see how it would hurt your profit margins eh, overall. If, in fact, if most of the volume long term is going to be the 7800 XT, I think people will pay 510 bucks for this car that's clearly better than the 4070, but whatever. That's not what AMD decided to do. They clearly thought that hitting that 499 price point was worth losing some margin on the top car, but they weren't willing to do it for the 7700 XT. And I do honestly think they might both sell okay anyways because of their Starfield bundle. But, you know, speaking of that Starfield bundle... The next part of this video is actually going to get into why NVIDIA's performance in Starfield and why their support for their software features in some upcoming games is a bit lackluster. And it's not because AMD's anti-competitive. It's actually, 
Well, it's actually very interesting, and I'm going to leak that information and also new updates on Navi32 supply, but first, an ad from Micro Center. Micro Center is opening up yet another new store in Charlotte, North Carolina, the second new store in eight years, bringing the total to 26 nationwide. By signing up and visiting the new Charlotte store, you can receive a 128 gigabyte flash drive for free. You do need to go there in 2024 when the store opens, but if you're in the area and you do, they'll give you a flash drive whether you're a new Micro Center customer or not. But if you are a new customer, especially if you are one right now, you can get a free 256 gigabyte SSD, and you can also get $25 off your build if you submit a picture of it after putting it together. So if you are planning to buy an RX 7800 XT or 7700 XT next week, make sure you use the link and codes in the description to get another $25 off and then get a free SSD with them. Remember, all of the deals online and in the description here stack on top of each other for tremendous savings at Micro Center and even just clicking on the links in the description. Please do. Clicking on those links helps the channel a lot. And if you want any of the products at Micro Center right now, it also helps you save extra money. Check out Micro Center today. All right, now let's get back to the video. And actually, we'll be getting back to a section that I believe will be, well, the spiciest of this video. And I want to say this up front. I didn't really have a plan at first to do another video this week. I'd already put out a podcast, a rather long video. And if I look tired, guys, it's because I am exhausted. But the next stuff I'm about to communicate was important enough that I thought it had to get out before the weekend. And so, well, here we go. Whether NVIDIA likes it or not, Starfield is poised to be the biggest, if not one of the biggest, AAA PC gaming hits of the year. And yeah, it's being bundled with AMD graphics cards that people in retail tell me probably would have sold fine whether Starfield was bundled with them or not. And well, apparently it gets worse for NVIDIA. A few days ago, I was tipped off that Starfield was not performing as well as they wanted it to at launch on NVIDIA graphics cards. And in fact, I was directly told that this is because, according to some people in the gaming software divisions of NVIDIA, they didn't get the funding they requested earlier this year. That's not to say that they're not being paid enough, but it is to say that they thought the team needed more resources, but instead those resources were sent to software teams that were going to work on AI and data center to make more massive piles of money during this AI boom. And, well, a side effect of this is that Starfield is not as optimized as it could be on day one. Now, it might get a patch later to be 10% better than what it is now relative to AMD, and I'm sure they're working on that. But in the short term, I was directly told that there was a meeting happening where some of the higher ups at NVIDIA were considering trying to get a new narrative going about AMD being anti-competitive again. And when I asked, what do you mean again? Crickets. And this is where the conversation pretty much ended. But I don't think you need a detective to know what the again was. It was that absolute horse shit story about AMD supposedly blocking DLSS that has now been confirmed to be false. But it was a story that had a weird start and then was covered by a bunch of channels and then nudged on by NVIDIA. And according to NVIDIA, that nudging really panned out well for them last time, and they think it would be easy to get that kind of a narrative going again for, well, for really their own mistake, not putting enough resources into gaming because they see themselves as an AI company now. And look, I understand how shocking this is. It shocked me. It's the only reason I put out two videos this week in addition to a podcast while being exhausted from moving into this new house. But I thought people needed to know, and I did follow up with other sources. And remember, these other sources at NVIDIA, these aren't people that gave me bullshit info about AMD blocking DLSS. That was false. No, these people got me information on the 4060 Ti getting a de facto price drop before the 7800 XT launches, and that was true. These are verified people that I know that work at NVIDIA that have given me leaks that no one else covered that ended up to be true. These other sources also told me that basically, yeah, it's not like the gaming software division is being defunded or anything. It's not. It's just it's not getting as much 
of a budget increase as the AI and data center divisions are, and that they warned that they needed more funding if they wanted to really have good day one optimizations for some of the big upcoming releases, and that that's why Starfield is underperforming. And, and another source actually told me that, well, they don't know any knowledge of this directly, but they do know there have been transfers probably from the uh, software division for gaming into the data center divisions and that funding increases for those groups is being ramped up way more than the gaming group and that there have been, well, there have been complaints. And so, look, if you see a game come out where NVIDIA is underperforming, it might be because NVIDIA really is not prioritizing gaming as much as AMD, who makes all of these consoles that need to perform well, they probably just don't care as much anymore. And if DLSS isn't in some games on day one or month one or month two, it might be because they're not spending the money they could to get some of these things out as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, that's what something I thought was very important for all of you to hear before the release dates and before possibly some new bullshit narratives come out. But, uh, well, you know what? Let's actually end this video on a couple of good notes. Let me just pivot right into this without too much of a transition here. So another thing that I'm hearing about Navi 32 supply is that, well, at first it may not have earth shattering supply. It's still going to be good. It is going to be a healthy amount of 7,700 XTs and 7,800 XTs at launch. And if you don't get one, apparently AMD is preparing to ship volume per locations that need it the most. And so if the 7800 XT sells out on day one, or week one, I should say, don't worry, more are on the way and will keep coming throughout the holiday season. AMD is just waiting to see which regions need a ton of it first because they don't want to overship these products like they did recently with some releases this year. Oh, and one more thing from that Scott Urkelman interview. If you read through it, you'll see that he directly says that they have not a lot of interest in making smaller dies moving forward, and that, in fact, the sub-$200 market is almost exclusively going to be occupied by APUs in upcoming lineups. Why is this important? Well, when it was announced that AMD wasn't likely to launch Navi 41 or Navi 42, some people assumed that Navi 43 would be some super weak card like the RX 7600 is right now for its time. After all, that's called 33. Why wouldn't 43 be as weak for its time? Well, here you have Scott Herkelman directly saying they don't see a point in making smaller dies anymore. And this backs up something that I've communicated in a recent video that Navi 43 and Navi 44 are going to be mid-range graphics cards for our, the RDNA 4 lineup next year. What does that mean? Well, if they're both mid-range, what that would tell you is Navi 44 is probably actually around the performance level for its time that you're seeing in the 7600. Therefore, Navi 43 probably will be argued as a high-end card when it comes out, and it's certainly not a weak mid-range card. If anything, an upper mid-range card, again, like the 5700 XT. This was a card that, while it didn't compete with the 2080 Ti, was barely weaker than the 2080 and did bring new levels of performance to a pricing tier that wasn't just like $200 or something. And I think that's very encouraging. But uh, yeah, so that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss more leaks coming about RDNA and Lovelace products launching over the next year. And of course, also make sure that you subscribe to Moore's Laws Dead on Patreon. We have a developer coming on Broken Silicon for the next episode who worked at Obsidian as part of Xbox Studios, and he's got a lot to say about developments in gaming that have happened recently. So if you join the Moore's Lazard Patreon for the price of a can of tuna every month, just $2, not even a cup of coffee, you can ask questions to this guest before the episode is recorded. Of course, you'll also get episodes of die shrink ad free exclusive only for patrons you'll get early ad free versions of broken silicon at the proper tiers access to the discord and so on and so forth we cannot do this independent reporting that tries to get things accurate without our patrons so if you have the extra money please support us there but no matter what if you've made it this far thank you for watching <laughs>